Tyrannosaurus Rex. No, not this T-Rex. I mean, this T-Rex is the largest terrestrial carnivore ever known, and is one of the most recognizable and fearsome predators of all time. And, of course, very few could challenge the T-Rex. In fact, I'm going to put some honorable mentions that they cannot beat the T-Rex, though. Like, I know the Spino is longer and is quite majestic as a water dragon, however, it is smaller, its body posture it's also vulnerable to a T-Rex bite to the neck. It's just not equipped to deal with the T-Rex. And I know Giganotosaurus is really big, but it's smaller than the T-Rex in terms of mass. Only larger in terms of mass in Dominion. Dominion Giganotosaurus can beat the T-Rex. However, a real-life Giganotosaurus cannot beat a T-Rex. The T-Rex simply has the better fundamentals. Utahraptor is just too small to even do anything to a T-Rex. Even a group of them wouldn't do much. Although, to be fair, Utahraptor could defeat a juvenile T-Rex. But an adult one, that's just no. Urban Force may be OP, but Stegosaurus cannot beat a T-Rex. It's just not equipped to deal with a T-Rex. And finally, Allosaurus, that's just absolutely crazy. Even Sora Fagonax cannot beat a T-Rex. Sure, it could make the T-Rex bleed out or something, but the T-Rex would kill the Sora Fagonax first before the Sora Fagonax could even... Actually, no, the T-Rex probably wouldn't even get bitten because the T-Rex is abnormally agile and it would most likely get the first bite off. But that's enough for the ramble. I'm going to show the list of dinosaurs that could beat a T-Rex. I don't know how many, so I didn't say a number. Number one... The Triceratops. Well, it is quite obvious. The Triceratops' name means three-horned face. Two of them are very long, each being one meter long. This pair of horns is capable of impaling the T-Rex's internal organs. Additionally, the Triceratops has a ball socket joint, which allows it to turn its head 360 degrees very quickly. This means that the Triceratops will be able to turn its head around extremely quickly to deal with the T-Rex. So even in an ambush, the T-Rex would struggle a bit. Additionally, the Triceratops' forelimbs are splayed out like a lizard. This means that the Triceratops has abnormally agile capabilities that would help deal with the T-Rex even better. Not to mention that the Triceratops' frill protects the neck from getting bitten by the T-Rex. And on top of that, the T-Rex's body posture makes it vulnerable to a strike from a trike. Now, the thing is, I'm only talking about the process species because the process one is the one that is only slightly smaller than the T-Rex. The Horridus is just around half the size of the T-Rex. So the Triceratops process can beat the T-Rex most of the time. The Triceratops Horridus, however, is up to debate. Probably not as much. Number two, the Ankylosaurus. However, just for convenience sake, I'm going to call Anki. Now, I may seem like a hypocrite for using walking with dinosaurs Anki, despite the fact that one, the Anki has the wrong patterns, and two, the Anki's body build is not flat enough. The Anki specimen of CMN8880 measures at around 9.47 tons, in terms of mass, which is larger than an average T-Rex, however, it is still slightly smaller than the largest T-Rexes like Scotty. But that's not what we came for for the Anki. What we came for for the Anki is the massive club tail at the end of its body. I'm sorry if I described it wrong. Easily break bones and has a 100 degree turning angle. The Anki also has bony plates on its back called the osteoderms, protecting its body from getting hurt. The Ankylosaurus has flat build also means that the T-Rex has to lower its head. It may try and flip the Anki over as well. However, the Anki would simply act on its defensive instincts, which involves slanting its back towards the attacker. And with again a powerful club tail, the T-Rex is even more unlikely to flip the Anki over. The T-Rex's best shot is the head, but even then, the head is extremely armored. And I apologize for using footage from Clash of the Dinosaurs. But this is perhaps the only dinosaur documentary that showcases the Anki's defensive instincts. Number three, any sauropod that is large enough. For example, the Alamosaurus, 
Argentinosaurus, etc. I mean, they're simply too big for the T-Rex to deal with. And because a lot of these giant sauropods have their necks positioned in an area that is safe from a T-Rex bite, the T-Rex would stand no chance against any of these sauropods around three to seven times bigger than the T-Rex. And Argentinosaurus even more. Basically, what these sauropods will do is simply crush the T-Rex under their own weight, provided by their forelimbs. I'm still not sure why Jurassic World Evolution would make sauropods defenseless. Because they're just too big. Number 4, Shantungosaurus. If an Edmontosaurus and Nectens versus T-Rex encounter is close to a tie, slightly tugging more towards the T-Rex's favor, then the Shantungosaurus would probably still win against a T-Rex more times than a T-Rex wins against a Shantungosaurus, because the Shantungosaurus is essentially just a bigger Edmontosaurus. The Shantungosaurus simply has everything the Edmontosaurus has. Powerful forelimbs used for stomping, powerful hind limbs used for kicking, a powerful and stiff tail used to smack some foals, and not to mention it could also bite on the T-Rex. It wouldn't do that much damage, but it would still make T-Rex reconsider. When you combine the fact that the Shantungosaurus is basically just a bigger version of the Edmontosaurus, adding into the already immense weight, and also combine that with an herbivore's mentality, uh, if provoked, then attack in name of defense. What you end up having is an oversized hippo that will be absolutely aggressive towards anything that dares to provoke it, using its entire body as a weapon. Most of the attacks might not be lethal, but would still be heavily damaging, and the T-Rex would most likely retreat. And I'm going to end it here at number 5, it's the Diplodocus. AKA the only creature in Brightside's list that can defeat a T Rex. It's separate from the other large sauropods because the Diplodocus's neck is in a position where it's vulnerable to a T Rex bite. However, the saving grace of the Diplodocus is because the center of the mass of it was very close to the hip socket, the Diplodocus could rub it into a bipedal posture with relatively little effort. So technically, it could still crush the T-Rex no problem, even though it is only 24 tons in terms of mass, which is considerably smaller than the likes of Argentinosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Alamosaurus, etc. And no, it would not use its tail, like, I know that its tail is quite powerful and supersonic, and it could hurt predators, however... By doing so, it could, it could hurt the Diplodocus also by breaking its own tail. I don't think a Diplodocus would want to commit self-harm and mutilation just to fend some predators off. Anyway, that is all I have to say. Let me know if I missed any. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all next time.